Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So, before we get started, I just want to mention, and I know some people find this annoying, but I gotta plug the social media. Go follow us on Instagram and Twitter. We're almost at 100 Twitter followers, so maybe you guys can help us get over 100. That'd be fantastic. Of course, if you really love our videos, consider supporting us on Patreon. We take video requests there, and we always respond to direct messages and stuff. We still try to respond to every YouTube comment, but we can get into more kind of deep discussion on Patreon because it's just impossible to respond to every comment with deep, insightful commentary. It would take us literally forever. So, as you've seen in the title, today's topic is Mississauga. Mississauga, being Toronto's western neighbour, is obviously an important city for us to talk about and of course I could go and bash it because Mississauga in some ways is a suburban hellscape. It's full of parking lots and office blocks and it's just not super pleasant for a lot of uh, a lot of its area. However, Mississauga is trying to redevelop itself and since the city is pretty much entirely developed, uh, it has to densify, which is what an urbanist likes to see in a city. Density and medium density and transit. And Mississauga, of course, in the past hasn't had a lot of these things, but the past is the past, and I'm excited to see where Mississauga can go in the future. In fact, Mississauga has some towers that are proposed that are 270 meters tall. It'll take the title of uh, the tallest tower outside of Toronto back from Edmonton at the Stantec Tower and put it in the GTHA, which is pretty cool. That being said, today we're talking about the transit network, and to start, we have to talk about the GO lines. Now of course Mississauga is served by three GO lines as well as the UP Express if you consider that a GO line or maybe it's its own thing, it's hard to say, everyone thinks of it differently. First we have the Lakeshore line which travels across the south of the city with the most important station obviously being Port Credit because we will have a future connection to the Here Ontario LRT. It's fantastic to see that the Lakeshore West line now has uh, service uh, every 20 minutes during the midday and every 30 minutes uh, outside of that. It's an awesome service, it's relatively frequent, and it means that there are decent connection opportunities at Port Credit and that will only improve with RER in the future. Next up, just to the north of that, we have the Milton Line, which is only a commuter service, which is limited, of course, but it still offers some useful commuting opportunities for people in the center of Mississauga as well as western Mississauga out to Toronto and Toronto Union Station and all the jobs of downtown Toronto. Next up, just in the northeast, we have the Kitchener Line, which has a stop at Malton. There's only one stop there and currently there's kind of limited service. However, in the future with RER and uh, all day two-way service out to Kitchener, we'll probably see more trains stopping here, so it's an important point. And then finally, the UP Express. Now since Pearson doesn't currently have a great transit connection to Mississauga, though it's technically not as bad as it has always been given that the Mississauga Transit way is around now, uh, the UP Express is less considered a Mississauga Transit asset, though in the future as transit connections to Pearson improve and there's perhaps an Eglinton connection to Ronforth Gateway where the Mississauga Transit way stops, uh, this connection with the UP Express will actually be really important because it will mean a direct express connection to Pearson in only 25 minutes and then you can continue on to Mississauga uh, saving you a lot of time over perhaps taking the Eglinton LRT across to Mississauga. Then we have the Mississauga Transit Way. Now the Transit Way is something that we've already kind of discussed in some of our station focus videos, we'll link to those uh, in a card. Uh, but the transit way is pretty cool. Now it does kind of run through some industrial areas and lower density uh, kind of zoned areas. However, we're starting to see a bit more density around some of the stations, which is fantastic. It also is the closest thing we have to a higher order transit connection all the way to Pearson Airport. It does stop at Runforth Gateway, but that's pretty much at the airport lands already. And when the Eglinton West LRT is brought over, then you'll have a connection directly to Toronto's rapid transit system, which is exciting. Uh, the Mississauga Transit Way, though, it, for me is more of an exciting thing in the long term because it's fully grade separated, well, for the most part, which means that eventually, similar to how Ottawa converted their transit way to a very nice grade separated LRT, the same thing can happen in Mississauga. That is what I kind of envision as Mississauga's second LRT line. Once the Huron-Ontario line is built, 
then we can talk about perhaps an underground connection to the very conveniently located LRT terminal at uh, square one, and, and then have a line that basically turns the Mississauga Transit Way all the way to the Eglinton line into a very nice high order LRT. So that will be very nice to see in the future, and the Mississauga Transit Way is a fantastic kind of lead to that. Next up, it's worth talking about the bus network. So as a whole, the bus network in Mississauga in the past was relatively weak, uh, but thanks to kind of a redesign that Mississauga has been doing along with a lot of other North American cities, including Edmonton, uh, Mississauga is trying to change its network to be more like a grid network. Now it's doing it over five years, uh, and overall the results are fairly positive. My way now comprises of my local and my express, which is something I like to see. Express versus local services is definitely something you see in kind of more premium transit networks, and so it's a positive to see that for sure. It's also fantastic to see that Mississauga is finally getting night buses. Uh, only a few routes will have the night bus services, uh, but the fact that Pearson will actually be connected to Mississauga 24 hours a day, or the center of Mississauga, 24 hours a day is fantastic to see. It really makes the central area of uh, square one an actual viable place to live without a car because no matter what 24 hours a day you can go to Pearson which means that you could technically 24 hours a day go pretty much anywhere in Toronto as well because there's 24 hour bus service from Toronto to Pearson so it's fantastic to see now kind of the final and perhaps the most interesting piece of the Mississauga transit puzzle is the here Ontario LRT now the project is kind of currently in the RFP stage, which means that it's being bid on, but we'll probably see an announcement on it very soon. And when that happens, of course, we'll have to make a video about that. The Here Ontario LRT is kind of one of the most underappreciated projects in Ontario and perhaps all of Canada. It's going to connect to uh, two GO lines, the Milton and Lakeshore lines, as I mentioned. However, the Lakeshore line connection is definitely more important since that's an all-day service. So you can imagine people coming from west of Mississauga will transfer onto the Here Ontario LRT and perhaps people will take the Here Ontario LRT from downtown Mississauga at square one down to Port Credit and then across to Union Station for jobs in downtown Toronto, which is fantastic uh, when you imagine that. It will also connect up to the Brampton Gateway Terminal, which is a key transit node in Brampton, as well as the Mississauga Transit Way, as I discussed before. So that Cure Ontario LRT project connects tons of important transit nodes in Peel region, and it's kind of going to reorganize the entire Mississauga Transit Network to really focus on the Cure Ontario corridor, which is awesome to see. It means that Mississauga will then have a north-south primary transit corridor and an east-west primary transit corridor plus the Lakeshore West Line, which means that Mississauga is actually being covered pretty well by high order transit once that's complete in about 2023-2024. Anyways, those are kind of my thoughts on Mississauga's transit. Of course, there's lots of improvements that need to be made, but overall it's actually not that bad. And for the sixth largest city in Canada, uh, and a city of over a million people, which is kind of crazy. That's not something that many Canadian cities have. Mississauga is doing pretty well. The fact that it doesn't have a ton of high order transit seems negative, but it actually means that they can invest a lot in improved bus service and that the LRT lines that Mississauga is getting are already going to have a lot of demand from day one. So all of this is super exciting. So if you enjoyed this video, of course, go subscribe. Share the video, like it, it helps us grow faster, and as always, have a nice night guys, thanks.